They better deal with the youngest ones, not the oldest ones. These books aren't really science books anymore. They're books about evolution. I think it's part of a much bigger picture for a new world order. See, the guys who started this country said, Behold these truths to be self-evident. All men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain rights. Like you have the right to have a church, or does the government create churches? It's the difference between 501c3 and 508c1a. You better study that out. Do you have the right to get married, or does the government give the right to get married? It's the difference between a marriage license and a marriage covenant. Big difference. You better study that out. But did you know 75% of kids from Christian homes who go to public schools will reject the Christian faith after one year of college? That's what happened to Crawford Toy. Most people have never heard of Crawford Toy, but he was a very famous Southern Baptist seminary professor. He almost married a girl named Lottie Moon. Has anybody ever heard of Lottie Moon? You know, you guys have the Lottie Moon offering every Christmas. She was a great missionary to China. Crawford Toy, after the Civil War, went to Europe and learned about evolution. And he sucked it in and believed it. He became an evolutionist. Crawford came back to his Bible class and said, you know, the Bible intends to teach a plain six-day creation. The Bible is simply in error at that point. The Bible's in error. Now, Crawford, hold on. Maybe your theory's in error. Maybe you got brainwashed. It's very easy to get brainwashed. I'm going to try to brainwash the whole crowd, and then we're going to quit and go home. And tomorrow we'll talk about the Garden of Eden. What was that like? Why did they live to be 900? But first I want to try to brainwash everybody. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tell you a little story. As I tell the story, I will brainwash you. Maybe you've never been brainwashed before. It's a harmless procedure. Don't worry about it, okay? When I'm done telling the story, I will ask you two simple questions about the story. If you know the answer... I just want you to raise your hand, okay? If you don't know the answer, it will be because you have been successfully brainwashed. Now pay attention. Here goes the story. Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left and jogged back home. As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men, and why did he leave home jogging? If you know, raise your hand, but don't say it out loud. It's about five or six. Ooh, okay, the rest of you, pay attention. We're going to try it again, okay? Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. I'll give you a hint. That's important. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways, turned left, and jogged back home. As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men, and why did he leave home jogging? Anybody new figured out? Two more. Okay. The rest of you, pay attention. We're going to try it one more time. But now I'm going to unbrainwash you. So you didn't realize it, but I had you brainwashed in the first three seconds. I'm going to unbrainwash all of you now just by showing you a couple of pictures. I'll tell the same story word for word, but watch the pictures. You will feel yourself get unbrainwashed. It's the coolest feeling. Are you ready? Here goes. Once upon a time, a man left home jogging. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left. He jogged a little ways and turned left and jogged back home. As he was jogging home, he noticed two masked men waiting for him at home. Who were the masked men? <laughs> the guys are in the umpire. You say, uh, Brother Hovind, is it that easy to get brainwashed? Oh, yeah. You see, as soon as I said a man left home, you started thinking about a house, and you were off track. And once you get off track, it's pretty tough to get back on. Would you like to see how kids get brainwashed in your school system by the millions every year? Millions of kids in America every single year get brainwashed, and it's so simple how they do it. They put the kid in kindergarten. He can't even read yet. And they give him a book like this. I can read about dinosaurs. Would anybody like to just take a wild guess at what the first sentence in the book says? <laughs> millions of years ago. And that kid's being thrown off track in the first five seconds. 
How many kids are being taught that in your town? Like all of them. That's calling Jesus a liar. Did dinosaurs live millions of years ago? Dr. Seuss even says it, millions of years before you were born. Jesus said the creation of Adam was the beginning. Oh, huh. somebody's wrong, folks. Now, wait a minute. The Bible says before the flood came, they lived to be 900 years old. How is that possible? Well, we'll cover that in seminar part two tomorrow. But uh, what about the flood? Well, that's covered on video number six. And what about dinosaurs? Well, that's covered on video number three. But listen, you're going to be told in school, you started like a slime and you slowly became a human. You be careful because that philosophy will spoil you. Jesus said, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition of the world and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Hey, if a child goes 12 to 16 years to school in your town, how's he going to view the world? Probably as an evolutionist. Hey, if the Bible's right about the beginning, maybe it's right about the end. Mm -hmm. Let's summarize here. God made the world. He owns it. He makes the rules, and we are all guilty of breaking His rules. Every one of us. I'll show you. Here's the Ten Commandments. He told us, Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. How many of you have ever told a lie in your life? Put your hand up. Come on. You're doing another one if you don't. Okay. All right. Thou shalt not steal. How many ever stole something? Come on, you already told me you're a liar. Put your hand up, okay? <laughs> Keep your hand go up there, brother. Put it up. Okay. All right, so far we know we're all a bunch of lying thieves, right? Do you want to read the whole list and see how we're doing? <laughs> we better stop right there. There's no question we are guilty and we are going to be punished. God is a righteous judge. He cannot look upon sin and we're going to be punished. Or you need to find a substitute. That's where Jesus comes in. He wants to pay for your sins. 36 years ago, I told him he could pay for mine. I asked him to forgive me and save me. Hey, if you died today, where would you go? Smoking or non-smoking? <laughs> where are you going when you die? Hmm? You ought to think about that because you're going to be dead for a really long time. All you get in this life is a little bitty dash between two dates. I'm going to die someday. I'm going to try to make it the last thing I do, but it's going to happen. Hey, it could happen today. Have you seen the way they drive around Knoxville, Tennessee? You have got some certified rednecks out there, folks, and you can get killed on the way home tonight. Right? Where are you going when you die? If you're not sure you're saved, why don't you ask the Lord to forgive you and save you? And if you are saved, what on earth are you doing for heaven's sake? Everybody ought to find something to do for the Lord. There's a war going on. Find something to do, okay? Get busy. Win souls. Be a Sunday school teacher. Bus driver. Do something for God with your life. If we can help, that's what our materials are for. Catalog on the back table back there as well as our videos. We want to help strengthen your faith in God's Word. We hope you've enjoyed this video series on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. Much more important, though, than knowing all the truth and facts about science is to know the truth about whether you're going to heaven or not. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, uh, let me explain quickly what you need to do to go to heaven. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. We've disobeyed the Creator. We've, we've done wicked things. We're sinners. Some are worse than others, at least in man's eyes, but we've all broken God's laws. And the Bible says you have to repent. The word repent means to turn. It actually means two things, to turn from your sin and to turn to God. God's looking for a change in your attitude where you say, Lord, I don't want to do wrong anymore. I'm sorry, I've offended you. I want to do right. And you turn from sin and you turn to God and say, God, would you please forgive me? Would you save me? The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to admit you're a sinner. Number two, the Bible says in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. We deserve to die and go to hell because of our sin. But Jesus died for you. He loves you. He wants you to come to heaven. And anybody that will ask him for the free salvation, God will give you the gift of eternal life, it says in Romans 6.23. It's a free gift. And it says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you would just call and say, Lord, I'm a sinner, would you please forgive me? And ask him. He will give you that free gift of eternal life. Why don't you just pray with me right now, and you could receive Christ as your Savior. There's no magic words. God's looking at your heart. But if you could say this and mean it, God would forgive you. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws. 
I'm sorry, please forgive me. Please apply your blood to my account. And forgive my sins and take me to heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, if you call upon the Lord, you shall be saved. So if you've asked the Lord to save you, he promised he'd save you. Now your job is to grow. Read your Bible, pray, get involved in a good Bible-believing church, and begin to grow to be a good Christian. Thank you so much. Call or write if we can be any help at all. We'd be glad to help. For more information on the ministry of Creation Science Evangelist,